Bad news for Perez. After the Brazilian GP, everything started to go south for Perez. On top of that, he wasn't even the one to be blamed for the outcome of the situation between him and Verstappen. While the media has heavily defended Checo, the team took a stance and made it very well known to him that if he doesn't obey the team's rules, then repercussions will follow. With that being said, Perez is in a place that not many drivers would want to be, and when you have Verstappen as your teammate, then the outcome cannot be good for you. Perez has had a horrible weekend in Interlagos, and eventually that is what cost him a lot in the fight with Leclerc. At one point, Leclerc was last in the race, and while Perez wasn't able to capitalize on this outcome due to the fact that he got his tire strategy wrong, he was played dirty by his teammate Verstappen. Well, uh, mate, you've won it. Totally, totally dominant. That was absolutely fantastic. Well done. Max was put in front of Perez so that he could chase down Leclerc at P4, with the Monegasque making a perfect comeback after being the last to hit Norris. But the Dutchman wasn't even able to pass Alonso at P5, let alone Leclerc at P4, with five laps to go in the race. Verstappen was supposed to let go of Perez again, with the Mexican finishing P6, the position he was in prior to the switch happening. However, this didn't happen, and Perez was left out to dry by his teammate and his team. Although the team apologized on the radio and said later that the situation had been discussed internally, and Perez has also added that no more information will leak to the media about this stuff, we have enough material to know what happened. Obviously, Verstappen isn't happy to play the role of a good Samaritan and let go of teammates, even though he's capitalized on this situation multiple times throughout his career. However, Perez deserved to be let go by Verstappen after everything he's done for him. Unfortunately, Verstappen doesn't feel like it, and a lot of this goes back to Monaco. Abu Dhabi was also a race in which Perez had something to say to the team regarding the pace of his teammate, Verstappen. When Perez pitted, he was able to cut a couple of seconds off the lead for Verstappen. With the Dutchman exiting the pits, Perez was able to catch up to him and be very close. However, Verstappen maintained a lead of two seconds over Perez for a couple of laps. Perez thought that the slow pace of Verstappen was eventually what cost him a lot of time, with Leclerc chasing him from behind. That is why he urged the team to tell Max to speed up or to let him go if he doesn't want to speed up. Obviously, the second scenario didn't happen, and Perez was left on his own yet again. When talking about this particular segment of the race, Perez added, I think it's how this sport really works. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. Ferrari and Charles did a fantastic race. They had great tire management and they were stronger than us, especially in that first stint. I died towards the end. That made it a little bit tricky with our strategy. In the second stint, when I was behind Max, who was on a one stop, I was on a two, I ended up not being able to maximize this stint and I couldn't push as much as we should have. But at the end of the day, we gave it our all and that's what really matters. We were discussing switching to a one stop at some point, but tire deg was higher than we thought it was going to be. Many thought that the proper call would be for Max to slow down and hold Leclerc a bit, something that Perez did for him last year in the finale in Abu Dhabi, ending up with Hamilton losing all the advantage to Verstappen. However, Verstappen and didn't feel this way as he added, that is quite a tricky call to make. You also don't want to end up. Of course, you can possibly block, but I mean, is that fair racing? I think it's not the nicest way going out of the season like that. It looked like Checo was catching him enough to try and actually get a move, but then he lost quite a bit of time with that bit of a fuss between Pierre and Alex. He lost quite a bit of time with that because I was watching that on the screens. As we mentioned earlier in this video, everyone in the media is on the Perez side of this conflict. However, experts don't really feel like Perez is the one to be pitted in a situation like this. And if he would have wanted a legitimate shot at the P2 spot in the Drivers' Championship, he should have driven faster. Peter Windsor was the first to talk about this matter, adding that Perez was to blame for telling the team that Max was too slow. Further elaborating, probably a mistake, I think, by Checo. To get on the radio on lap 29 and say, Max is holding me up, which was like a red flag to a bull because at that moment, of course, Max immediately started to reduce his lap times and the gap between Max and Checo started to increase. When that message gets out, he thinks, right, this is starting to get serious now. I'm not going to have another issue with Checo. On top of that, Windsor added that at this point of the race and with everything that happened in Brazil, Red Bull wanted to avoid further drama and stress because no matter what they do, 
if Checo and Max get close again, sparks will fly and emotions will be involved in this whole outcome. Max received the support of David Coulthard as well, who was a former Red Bull driver, adding that if Perez doesn't like it at Red Bull, then he could leave the team and go seek another one. Coulthard had some strong words for Perez, adding, It was an open conversation and there's nothing to be interpreted. The team made a request and the driver denied it. The answer was there before and someone is knocking again to try to get a different answer. Being consistent in your behavior patterns is a quality. Inconsistency is what you need to watch out for because you don't know what you're dealing with. Checo was out of Formula 1 with no one knocking on his door. Red Bull gave him the opportunity to come back and a car that's nailed on to win races. He's had a fair crack of the whip to try and beat Max, and he has consistently not delivered on the same level. He has occasionally done so, and I admire the victories he has had. But what is even more tragic for Perez is the fact that the team has signed Daniel Ricciardo as the third driver in the team, showing him directly that if he does not respect the regulations of the team and the rules that are set by Verstappen and Horn, then repercussions will follow. After everything Perez has done for the team, being treated like this way is not a fair outcome of a relationship between a driver and a team. However, Perez wasn't really fast enough to challenge Max, and slowly but surely, he is turning into a second Bottas. That is something he cannot change or help, but must excel in the next two seasons to demonstrate to the team that he is championship material. Against Max, this would be truly mission impossible. According to Damon Hill, Ricardo has a very good chance of suiting up for Red Bull starting seat given how the situation currently unfolds in the Austrian team. When talking about this matter, Hill added, It could be quite an interesting one if you think about the problems they have apparently had between Max and Sergio. Let's say the toys go out of the pram and there is some sort of fallout there. Daniel Ricciardo could be in prime position. It is his home and he does owe a lot to Red Bull, so he will be very keen to be back in that fold. What is it about the prodigal son who returns? He could be in a good position coming back and having learned a lot in other places. It can be that you can improve having been somewhere else than returning to the place you started. To this, Hill added that Sergio's contract is watertight and the Mexican will be with the team for a long time. However, if the relationship between him and Max deteriorates, then rest assured that Max will call upon his powers and will demand that Perez is replaced. What do you think about Perez and the current situation that the Mexican is currently in? Do you think that he deserves to be treated this way? And what do you think is next for him? Let us know in the comments below.